Top 25 battle between SEC teams with Vanderbilt coming to Tennessee in the interstate rivalry. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz. Glad to be with you here on the College Basketball Preview Show brought to you by the California Almond Board. Let's bring in CBSSports.com's Gary Parrish to a breakdown this matchup. And uh, Gary, the Vols' seven-game winning streak was snapped with the loss at Georgia. Meanwhile, Vanderbilt, nine consecutive wins, and along with Kentucky, the only team in SEC play still unbeaten in conference play. I know Tennessee is ranked higher, and they're ranked higher in your poll as well, but is it possible that the team in Nashville is better than the one in Knoxville? It's possible, and, and we might find that out to be true down the road. But so far, they haven't proved it on the court. The best win is you know, probably Missouri or Florida at home. Losses to Cincinnati, Illinois, Western Kentucky. There's just not much there in the body of work. Now, let me say this. Vandy is, is good. I know that. And I think they'll catch either Tennessee or Kentucky, and maybe both, at least once this season. But to date, the body of work is, is so-so at best. And that's why I have them outside of the top 25-1 and one, while acknowledging that they could very easily end up in there soon. I know going on the road is always tough, and you always talk about that, Gary, and obviously going into Knoxville is a difficult place to play, but you've talked about chemistry with this Tennessee team in the past, and now they're trying to work Melvin Goins and Cameron Tatum back into the lineup, their first game back from the suspension, uh, dating from that January 1st incident uh, in which Tyler Smith was kicked off the team. Uh, was this weekend against Georgia, and they didn't play that many minutes, the team didn't play well. What type of role do they have to have? It's tough for Bruce because... You know, you've got to figure out a way to balance, A, what got you on this little run of success, and that's great chemistry playing with a limited number of guys against the just common sense of Cameron Tatum and Melvin Goins are two of your better players. Not, not the best, but two of the better players, and they ought to be playing. And so the problem is you bring those guys back in, they get real minutes, then somebody else is, is losing minutes, and then, you know, and then suddenly you're running into chemistry problems again, and chemistry problems were the things that caused the, the – you know, sort of whole hum start to the season. So uh, it, it's a balancing act, and there's no perfect way to do it. I think you just got to try to blend them in uh, slowly but surely with the understanding that um, if you're going to be a legitimate top 15 team by the end of the season, Cameron Tatum and Melvin Goins probably have to be a part of that. Yeah, I think people are really impressed, though, that uh, Bruce Pearl's team did not lose once until this weekend with all the turmoil that happened and with all the uh, short, uh, the fact that they were shorthanded for so long w without uh, Tyler Smith now for the rest of the season and those two guys as well. Meanwhile, for Vanderbilt, back in the AP Top 25, Gary, and uh, have not talked about this team that much this season. Who were who the key guys for this squad? Well, A.J. Ogilvy is probably the, the most notable name because he was so good as a freshman. Uh, but his role is kind of diminished. I don't know if his role is kind of diminished, but his statistics have fallen off a little bit since his freshman season. Jeff Taylor is the guy. In fact, you could argue that he'll be the best player on the court in this game. He's hit double figures in five straight, got 18 Saturday against Auburn. And so, uh, you know, he's a guy that if we look up and Bandy finishes second in the East, uh, you know, advances to a, a second round of the NCAA tournament, Sweet 16, he'll be the main reason. All right, and may maybe that's like the case with happened with Vandy a couple years ago as well with that one guy taking over. Uh, Gary, uh, I know you think you said that you think that Vandy will pick off Tennessee once this season. Is this that one time? No, I, I don't think you do it in Knoxville. Is it possible? Sure. Um, but I don't think you get it done when you go in there, rivalry game, you know, 21,000 people cheering against you. They'll catch them in Memorial, or at least they'll have a good opportunity to. They'll probably be favored in that game. Might be able to catch Kentucky there too later on, but uh, – trying to win on the road against uh, that caliber opponent, that, that's a tough chore. Yeah, that Wildcats game is right around the corner as well. Gary, thank you very much, sir. We'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks, Jay. All right, folks, for more on this SEC matchup, keep it right here with CBSSports.com. And don't forget the college basketball preview show brought to you by the California Almond Board. Become a pro snacker with a handful of California almonds this season. For Gary Parrish, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.